What's going on, creatives? So generating images one by one is fine for small projects, but when you're dealing with a campaign that needs dozens or even hundreds of images, uh, the process needs a serious upgrade. And that's where automation comes in. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Replicate and the Flux API to scale the image generation workflow. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. For this recent resort campaign, this is the one I'm gonna use as an example. I have a number of images that I need and I could copy and paste each individual prompt, but I need a lot of images. This is where I'm gonna use the API because I can then kind of automate this process, making it much more efficient in the long run. So the solution by using the Replicate API, we can easily automate this process and we're gonna use, again, my luxury resort, and we have three steps that we're really gonna look at. Writing the structured prompts, automating bulk image generation, and then curating and upscaling the results. So I wanted to talk about an example of this because if you look at Billy Bowman, his video that he created he says here in his thread, 1,300 images in Minimax, 600 images in Genmo, hundreds of videos in Runway. There is no way he did this copying pasting prompts inside of the image generation or inside of Runway. Maybe inside of Runway, but definitely he didn't do the images like this. When you look at this video, you can see that he generated the images, uses images to, to video prompting, and then went into After Effects and did the other work. So this is his workflow, but the process of this, these images is where he saved time. Step one, preparing your environment. I'm going, I'm using Node.js. I'm using Visual Studio Code as my code editor, and I'm using Replicate for the website that, to interact with the model. Okay. So those setting up the API key. So I'm at Replicate, I have my account settings. We're gonna go over to the API tokens. And once you're here, you will just create, create tokens and you will get your API key. And if we go to explore, hey. so this is the model. You just come over here to API and you can see you have Node.js right here. And then you're just gonna copy this information. This is the information you need to ensure that you're connecting properly with the API. So you would just copy this information and then we move on to the next step. So the code walkthrough. So in our code editor, we're going to put in our code and here's the basics of it. Right now, this first part here is just really setting up the code is importing the dependencies for your code, making sure that you have your environment set up. So this is where my API key is, is at. Um, and then you can see that we are looking at the in our environment, we have also our replicate API token. So next we have getting the prompts. So to send the prompts to replicate we have a subfolder called data and in that subfolder i have my resort to dot json so this is where all of my prompts are and then finally the information that we're actually sending to the the api so we have the description, so we have a field description. So this is what's inside of my JSON file. My JSON file, I have fields description. I have a camera angle. I have the shot specs, the lighting, the details, the color palette. 
And we're saying that we're going to send all of this information to this model. And again, this is the Black Forest Labs Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra. And aspect, aspect ratio 16, 69. So that is the basic code that we have for our, for our API. So inside of that JSON file, we have the prompt. Now, to get the prompt, it was fairly straightforward. I went to ChatGPT and I basically told what the campaign was. This is a campaign for a resort and I needed an range of images to, as kind of like a walkthrough of the resort. And I asked it to return all of the descriptions, all of the prompts in this format. So the description, the camera angle, the shot specs, the lighting. Now this part here, this in my prompt, this is what I said was basically, this was allowed to change. This in my prompt was constant. So inside of the prompt, I'm telling it, you know, give me an array of images. You can change the, the description, the camera angle, the shot specs and the lighting. However, the details and the color palette must remain constant. And this is how we get the consistency throughout the images. Because again, what we're trying to do is get this a theme and the details and the color palette are what gives us that theme. Let's take a look at what this looks like inside of the code editor. So I have my resort. This is the file and you can see that this is all of the code that we just went through. I didn't cover this, but this is just the loop. So where do you put the images when you're done? And basically it's saying here, if you have a directory, it's gonna here, it's gonna go there. If the directory doesn't exist, it will create it. This makes it easy for me to uh, separate out my campaigns because all I have to do is change the name of the JSON file, change the name of the folder, and it's a completely new um, project. This is the JSON file. And again, this is what ChatGPT gave me. So I just asked for this and ChatGPT gave me this in this format. So when you get ready to run, the only thing you have to do is go node. Resort.js. It will start the run. And you can see it's connecting with it, but I'm gonna just go ahead and cancel this. I don't need it. And then you run it and you get all of your images. Now we have to do some fine tuning here. Let's take a look at that. We can open it up so we can kind of toggle through them. These are the images I produce, but do I have the right images? So that's the question I'm going to ask myself is that, am I missing something that tells the story? And one thing I did notice that I'm missing is that I don't have any images of a family in the pool. And I think that's what I wanted. Essentially what I'm going to do is take one of these prompts and then go over to chat GPT. And all I did was tell it to take the description, make it a Dutch angle with a close up for a family and give me the JSON format and the paragraph format. It made the update, did a copy. And this is when I can just choose whatever model I want to get the image that I want. I had it in mid journey and he got me this. And I think this one is, is a family of five, but is 
really closest to what I was thinking about. And then I also went over to the flux model and got this. Now this is not what I wanted. So we could try different models here and to see if we can get what we want. Let's try the Black Forest Snail. Let's try that one first. Let's see what we get. We'll take that. We'll go 16.9. And we'll generate. <laughs> and not bad, but you can see the, the differences between a flux model and mid journey is that the this is really photo realis realistic whereas mid journey is giving me back a little more artistic a little more creativity with the mid journey but this is what we can this is what we would end up doing to just kind of get through this process All right the next we will go with upscale now there are a lot of ways to upscale an image uh, we can actually use the API, API again for that. So if I come back here and let's see, I want to upscale an image. You can see that we will come in here and we will take this. Let's see what this. We would go with the API. We would then go in and again, edit our code. And if you don't know how to ed edit the code, you can just go into ChatGPT or Claude and say, I'm updating this set of code to for this API and let Claude do it, test it out and run. And that is how we can kind of upscale a large batch of images if we needed to. Uh, now we're ready for video and this is the bonus. The bonus here is we've done this work. We have the prompts, we have the code, we have the API, we know how to do this. The only thing left to do is now generate the video from these images. Only thing we have to do then is come in here and say, take take that same JSON file. Yeah. And yeah. remove the shot specs, remove lighting, remove the details, because all of that is in the image. We don't need the video model to to get a prompt for that. And we just simply add in the action. and the camera motion. And what that will result is something that looks like this. You can see that I have, I've updated everything. The description is there, the camera angle is there. Here's the action. So the color palette and then our camera motion, the slow zoom out, emphasizing the grandeur of the scene. And this, is what we got. Now, here's the problem. Any artist who is doing filmmaking will tell you, this is the first shot and it has some issues. One is zooming in versus zooming out. And then two, it has this little weird thing there. So we would have to generate this again and we would need multiple runs. So that's it. So now the thing is, is that there are a lot of things we can do. I will leave all of the, so that's it. I will leave everything in the, the description below, the links to instructions and to all of the code that I have. But the good thing that we have is once we understand this process, it is it becomes much easier to scale even bigger. And, and I will be showing that in future videos. So, all right, that's it, I'm out. Stay creative.